My name is Skyland Felch, and I'm going to install a transmission on this 2007 Chevy Express. In order to remove a transmission from a 2007 Chevy Express, just reverse the steps. Let's do this. Okay, here we got the rebuilt transmission we are installing, and we have to put on the torque converter. Here we got the torque converter, and we are going to install it right on to the shaft on the transmission, also a pump. Shut, Shut up, up and sit down. down. Okay, I got the transmission worked into place underneath the van, and before I jack up this transmission and crawl underneath there and finish up the install, I want to take a minute to talk to you about safety. Anytime I jack up a vehicle, I'm using a jack stand. This jack stand is supported on the van frame. In case this jack fails, it's going to rest on the van frame or some solid component of the van, not just thin floor metal to where if this fails, it could just bend and this vehicle would come down on you anyway. Um, there's a lot of things to consider, like clearance when you're rolling the transmission underneath the van, making sure you've got enough room ahead of time. You want to just take your time and think ahead because safety is number one. If that transmission falls in the air, it is not a good day. I would recommend having an extra hand or two whenever you're installing or removing a transmission up until the point at least you've got it bolted on the engine and on the rear support brace for the transmission. Be sure to chuck the wheel so the van doesn't roll when you remove the transmission. I did both sides just to be safe. You're going to want to make sure you have your ratchets, wrenches, extensions all ready to go. It takes a 15 millimeter drive. And I've got the bolts for the housing to the transmission on the engine so I can snug them right up when I get that transmission in the air. And then the bolts for the support, so I can throw that underneath, tighten down the support, that way the transmission's secure. And got a nut right here. Now this is what I'm talking about thinking ahead. You see that ring where the nut left a mark on the metal? I'm gonna make sure it goes right back in that same slot. going to want to work both sides of the transmission on slowly onto the stud it's an alignment pin and I'm just starting these bolts I'm not tightening them all the way down because I'm going to the other side and kind of working them both down simultaneously uh, the jack is holding up the transmission right now there's no rear support so I want to get these mounted first before I do anything else there's two on the side and there's two up there this one I access with a long extension, and then there's one more on the top bell housing. Take you to the other side. Now we're on the other side of the transmission, and I'm just gonna tighten these bolts a little tighter. Kind of working it and making sure there's nothing pinching. Blocking the camera shot just because it's such a tight space, and I'm working alone. Okay. We're gonna tighten that. Some of you wonder how I was jacking up the transmission with my hands on the transmission. I was using my legs. I've got the jack laying completely under the van running so that if I push the jack forward, it gets closer to the transmission. If I pull the jack backwards, it gets further. And I'm just focusing on making sure that jack doesn't move underneath the transmission. So any adjustments I'm doing where I need to move the transmission, I'm actually just moving the floor jack only. 
making sure that, that that transmission stays right on the jack and doesn't slide. If it does happen to slide, I carefully will maneuver it back into where it's balanced or center. Now that I'm going to get these snugged up, looks like there's one more bolt that goes up and around. Okay, now that we got two mounting bolts on the driver's side of the transmission installed, snugged up but not torqued, two transmission bolts on the passenger side of the transmission installed, and they're snugged up but not torqued. There's nothing supporting the rear of this transmission, so we're gonna carefully swing the jack to the side so I can slide in the support frame. The good, it's a good idea to not have a lot of stuff on your concrete floor that could trip up the jack. And I would not use a bottle jack at all underneath the transmission when you're installing it because it's just not stable enough. careful not to bump the jack so you don't make that thing fall. I'm going to go on the other side of the van and install the first bolt on that mounting support. Oh, I'm sorry, that on that support beam. We're on the top of the transmission inside the van. We got the doghouse cover off and we're gonna put in two bolts, mount the transmission to the engine. I'm gonna set down the camera because my hand's gonna block the shot. Okay, we got that top transmission mounting bolt on and it's got a stud sticking out of it. I had to go under the transmission with a long extension and a knuckle in order to tighten that down because of the angle. And then we've got the mounting bracket for the fuel line and the electrical harness. We're gonna slide that over the stud and tighten it all down with this nut. There's also another mounting bolt right here on the very top of the transmission. I'm gonna take this wrench after I've used my fingers to slip this thing into place and we're gonna just tighten it down with the wrench. I think that's really the only way I can access it enough to tighten it down is from the top.
now that I got everything out of the van, I'm gonna take a look around and see if I can't do a little preventative maintenance. Turns out I got a ripped boot on my drive axle, so while I've got it out, I'm gonna replace it with this one I picked up from the store. Got a new exhaust gasket, took my old gasket and referenced it to the new one, make sure I had the right part. And then I got some new nuts because when I was removing the old exhaust system, I stripped out the nuts. Picked up a transmission fluid dipstick because my old one wouldn't seal and kept popping open. And got some more transmission fluid. To make sure you don't end up with any loose nuts and bolts at the end of the job, you don't know where they go. What I like to do, when you unbolt it and remove the part you need to, bolt it back into position. That way you keep track of where it goes. We're under the passenger side of the van with the starter out of the way here. After you get your first bolt onto the flywheel, you go ahead and stick your pry right in the torque converter. Move the whole assembly to expose the next hole for the next bolt and continue to snug these down after you've got all the bolts snug down. Then I would rotate it again and then torque them down to spec. Now I'm gonna hook up the shift selector lever to the transmission. Effectively being able to put it in park. Okay. We're just gonna slip this little loop onto the pin. Make sure it pops on. There you go. All right, we're gonna hook up a nut on the bottom of this mount for the transmission. Goes through right here underneath the support frame. And tighten it down. Wearing safety glasses, I'm gonna clean all the electrical connections with electrical cleaner, both sides. Connect the four electrical connections back into the transmission. I've already done these ones here. Three of them clip. One of them has a slide pin where you push it down and it tightens it. I'm gonna secure the harness to this clip right here at the top of this housing. Keep it out of the way. We're gonna secure the fuel line to this brace right here, the back of the transmission. And bolt it in right here. We're gonna secure this transmission breather hose to the back side of this little brace. Clip it. All right, now we're gonna install the drive shaft up to the transmission using the help of my friend Jack. Jack stand. Here we go. I'm gonna use my feet to also lift it, drive it into place. Okay, working on there. I pre-lubed it with some transmission fluid. Spin this around, show you what I'm doing with my feet. I'm gonna support this with a jack stand so that I can take this mount and mount it right up to this bracket right here with these bolts. And I'm gonna use my air tool just to zip them in a lot quicker. Of course, this will be flipped around. Okay, with the transmission in neutral, I'm able to rotate the drive shaft and I wanna align it up with a marking I made earlier before I removed it just to make sure it's going on straight and balanced. Then I can slide on the retaining caps and bolt them up on both sides. When you're installing the rear part of the drive shaft to the differential, make sure that this pin sits inside of this notch right here. That'll make sure it's lined up in center. Okay, I wanna bleed the transmission lines of the old fluid before I reinstall them onto the new transmission. So I've got this air fitting 
and I'm going to blow it in the upper line that goes to the top of the radiator so that way I'm blowing the fluid down through the cooler and I've got it on really low pressure setting that way I don't blast this fluid everywhere combined with a catch pan there we go and then you should be able to start a siphon effect and it'll continue to drain once it gets mostly out I'm going to turn up the air pressure and really push all the old fluid out of this line okay we got the transmission fluid line ports covered just to protect to keep debris out of them I'm gonna take that off All right. and assemble the lines for the fluid of the transmission they just slip right into place you'll see that collar come out pop Put it back in. Should hear it snap back into place. All right. Not completely in yet, but I'm gonna wrestle with it. And you put these retaining covers back on, just so it goes over that C clip to protect it from opening in these lines to come back out. I pulled against these lines after I installed them just to make sure they were thoroughly installed. I couldn't get them out. This is like insurance right here. They crumble off. Try to source other ones. It's worth it. Before we put back the starter, I just wanted to point out a little bit of damage on the flywheel from the starter gear. This is the kind of stuff you want to keep your eyes peeled out for these type of repairs. Okay, we're getting the starter hooked back up. You definitely want to make sure you've disconnected the battery before starting this job, especially working with the starter. You're working so close to positive electrical current. Now, most of the nuts and bolts thus far have been 15 millimeters. These two drop down to 13 millimeters. They're long mounting bolts for the starter and just torque them down a spec. All right, with the new gasket in, we are going to wrestle this exhaust back under the van. Okay, we're currently wrestling the exhaust back in the van. I'd say the second most difficult thing to do. Got it slid into the pipe. And now it's time to bolt the exhaust mounting bracket. There's two bolts. Okay, this next one is called the pry bar trick. I'm gonna put my pry bar in the exhaust pipe and wedge it into position. Okay, that was not easy. So now that I got it slipped onto the studs, I threw on a bolt just to hold it in place. I ended up actually having to pry off of the frame in order to slip it over these studs. Then we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the electrical to the clip for the pre-cat sensor and the post-cat sensor, the electrical clip is right here off the back of the transmission electrical pigtail. Let me just connect that. All right, got a little bit of anesthesia on the studs and bolt just to help remove this a little bit easier. Gonna mount the top of the exhaust to the headers. Tighten that down. There's also a little nut right here to tighten this band where uh, the exhaust slid it into the other pipe towards the midsection. I'd previously loosened the dipstick tubes to give some flex for when the transmission was removed. Now we're going to tighten it all back up. There's a 10 millimeter nut that goes on the top of this mount and a 10 millimeter bolt that goes through these. We're gonna replace the coolant reservoir that was covering those mounting bolts and secure it with a 10 millimeter bolt. 10 millimeters being one of the rarest sockets in this world. At this point, we're gonna reconnect the battery. Okay, we got four quarts of transmission fluid we're gonna put into the tranny. Make sure you've got the correct fluid for your transmission with a funnel down the dipstick tube 
this is how this van takes new transmission fluid. You're just gonna take your time and pour it real carefully. Okay, make sure your van or vehicle is level and we've finished filling the four quarts into the transmission. We're gonna start the engine and measure the fluid level, adding only a half quart at a time. Some may know this with engine oil dipsticks, that crosshatch area represents about a quart level. On a transmission, it's about half a quart level. So you know, never really want to fill it more than half a quart in between checking the fluid level. All right, now we're gonna install the torque converter cover. There are four bolts that mount to the transmission side, right here and here on both sides. One bolt that mounts to the engine block. Now we're gonna install the doghouse. You just wanna push it in, take this clip to this receiver on both sides. Just like that. Mine's a modified doghouse. I had to remove my passenger and driver seats to get my doghouse over my machine. So I just reinstalled my seats. All right, that's it for the transmission install on this van. We went ahead and put four quarts in the transmission before we started it. Then we started it, let it warm up, and kept adding quarts until we got full on that dipstick. We had to wait in between pours, pouring it down the dipstick fill tube. Uh, you want that fluid to settle, otherwise it could give you a false reading. So we waited about 10 minutes between every time we filled. You wanna kinda of count time for that. Uh, if you found value from this video and you'd like to donate to support this channel, please follow the link below in the description. Uh, and I want to give you a little sneak peek of two projects that we're going to be bringing up right now. And you can give me a comment on which way you want us to go. All right, let me know which way you want to see this go. 93 CBR or RX-7.